the Civil War Guru Show. My name is Steve Munson and I'm the Civil War Guru. Today we have in here is a wonderful historical piece of Kentucky history and Texas history. This is a pistol made by J.C. Short of Danville, Kentucky. It's a massive pistol. It's 17 and 3 quarter inches overall length with a 12 and a half inch barrel. His name is on the top where my thumb is. Stamped in the barrel, J.C. Short, Danville. This is the only known Danville J.C. Short pistol in existence. The condition is fabulous. This, this pistol here, if it could just talk, would be unbelievable. Well, let me give you a little background on J.C. Short. J.C. Short started off uh, being a blacksmith. Then he moved to Harrisburg, Kentucky. And he went to work for a famous gunsmith there, Benjamin Mills. Benjamin Mills was famous throughout the state of Kentucky and throughout the West. Benjamin Mill made the finest. They're a New York style Kentucky rifle. They're real unusual. He made regular pistols. He made over and under rifles. And actually he made rifles for uh, the Western Theater. And when I say Western Theater, I mean for all the folks going West. And actually John Fremont in the Fremont Expedition they came to Harrisburg and got a set of guns for John Fremont from Benjamin Mills. And Benjamin Mills was famous in the known uh, United States. And in the 18, late 1850s, he, he was hired by the Springfield Corporation to, to run the armory at Harbors Ferry. And he was actually there the day John Brown made his famous raid, and he was held hostage there. And after Lee, you know, went in and took over, and, uh, and poor old John Brown capitulated, Ben Mills went back to Kentucky, and then he could see the Civil War brewing, so I actually went south and worked for a Confederate armory and uh, that made pistols, and I believe it was the Griswold and Gunderson factory. But this J.C. Short was one of his best apprentices, and he made guns that looked like uh, Benjamin Mills guns in the New York style, but then he also made it in his own style, and this is in his own style. And in 1858, J.C. Short left Danville now, there he was working on his own, where this pistol was made. And he went to Tyler, Texas. With the Civil War brewing, he was thinking money. You know, what can I do to capitalize and, and also to support my state in the Civil War? So he started the Confederate States Armory of Tyler, Texas. And these guys made a tremendous amount of, and, and variations of product. Muskets, swords, uh, cartridge boxes, etc. in Tyler, Texas. And he was the head, head dog. He had one more partner, I believe. And anyway, uh, so famous Kentucky history, famous Confederate Texas history, and uh, also uh, documented. This pistol, I'm going to set it down here, is photographed and featured in a three volume book. And Kenny, Kenny's our cameraman today, as usual. Uh, these are coffee table size. And this is the epilogue. This is the last of, of three volumes volume one, two, and this is the third volume. And this particular pistol, I'll open it up to the page. I don't know if Kenny will be able to see it. Kenny, how's it look on there? Yeah, raise it up. Raise it up. There you go. All right, here, here's it featured. And uh, the author of this book is Shelby Glean, a great guy, good friend of ours. 
and he featured this gun because this is the only known uh, J.C. Shark pistol of this style marked Danville, Kentucky in existence. I'm going to close this book and then also for all the Civil War collectors, Bill Allball, who was the, the original guru of Civil War history and knowledge, artifact knowledge of the Confederacy, he wrote this book and it's called Tyler, Texas. And in this book is about J.C. Short and his escapades with the Tyler, Texas Armory. But there, I'm just going to read one little thing out. It was pretty cool. And I'll open it up. That page, I got it marked. Uh, of course, this book's out of print. But on page uh, 12, they ran an ad in the paper in Texas. And it was a big box ad. It said, To arms, to arms. J.C. Sharp would respectfully return his thanks to the public for their liberal pat patronage of the people of the South and his manufacturing of the famous Kentucky rival. And it's warranted to kill an abolitionist at 400 yards. That was ran in a newspaper in Texas in 1861. Great book, a lot of history, and it's really surprising the amount of different artifacts that these guys made in Texas during the Civil War. But that's J.C. Shard. Now what we're going to do is, is reposition the camera. camera. I'm tongue-tied today. And we're going to get some close-ups of this thing so you can see the markings on it and get a real close-up and personal look at it. So from the old Civil War guru, enjoy the video. Alright, we got the the Kentucky Pistol by J.C. Short laid out in front of you. And of course we got a uh, Kentucky bourbon whiskey flask with it and it's actually got some great bourbon in it. Colonel Steinbach's famous single batch bourbon and up above it you'll see a part of a Kentucky rifle. That's a rifle made by Mathis of Bardstown, Kentucky in the 1820s and 30s. But I'm going to zoom in I'm going to turn the camera off and reposition it so we can get some real good close-ups of this pistol. It's just a fabulous pistol. So bear with me. Alright, there we go. We got a, a good shot of the, the lock. And uh, you can see the condition of the the inlet there where the, the lock's inlaid in the wood. Just fabulous workmanship. And this, you know, kind of over the top. I mean, this guy was really, really good. And and his, his Tyler, Texas rifles were good also. So I'm going to bring it up just a little closer. You guys are probably watching this on your computer or big screen TV. I don't want to make you dizzy. But there's a little close-up of the lock. That lock's marked. It's marked in an oval right underneath the bolster there. You can see the stamping. And normally they used uh, locks that were were distributed. They would buy their locks. Sometimes they didn't make their locks. Well, this is a, a bought lock. They would buy their locks and and they'd buy them and, and fit them with different guns. This is a, a lock made in Cincinnati, I believe, Ohio, and that was a big source of of supply for the gun makers in the Kentucky area. Where uh, you always see a lot of the guns with Cincinnati made locks, the guys that did make locks. Locks are difficult to make and it's so much easier to just to buy one and install it. Of good quality of course. Alright, I'm going to back it back and then I'm going to roll it over and get the markings on top of the barrel. Alright, there you go. There's a, a real good shot of J.C. Short Danville, Kentucky, marked on the top flat of the barrel, right behind the, the rear sight. And we're going to leave it there just for a second so you can get a good look at that. Uh, pretty rare. And, and remember, this, this gun's, I think I said it was uh, 17 and 3 quarter inches. This thing is huge. And uh, I'm going to get a shot of the muzzle 
and then that'll be it. Well, maybe I'll flip it over and get the backside. I think that would be a good idea. We'll do the backside, then we'll get the muscle. All right, bear with me. All right, there you go. There's a, a great shot of the back of the gun. And pretty, pretty neat. And uh, I like it's got uh, two brass ramrod pipes. One on the forward part of the barrel and, and the one that on the rear where it goes into the stock and then it has a pewter which is indicative of southern builders they use a lot of pewters and uh cap on the, the end of the wood above the ramrod and it has a single screw lock as you can see single trigger but this uh, killer condition all right now the last shot we're going to get will be of the muzzle all right this is the final shot. Uh, I measured and it's a little under a half inch in diameter so that's around I would say 45 caliber, 40-45 caliber somewhere in there. Um, I don't have a, a gauge to measure the bore but you can see how the riflings are cut in. But this is a great pistol and a historical find and, and to be featured in, in the guy that wrote the greatest book of Kentucky made Kentucky rifles Shelby Galeen, photographed in his book, and then with the, the Confederate history down in Tyler, Texas. This guy, you know, he, he contributed a lot to gunsmithing throughout the years. All right, from the old Civil War guru, have a great day.